Hello learners, welcome to class. Today we are going to study agency theory concept, conflicts and resolutions. Agency theory concept, agency theory concept, conflicts and resolutions. Agency theory concept, comma, conflicts and resolutions. So these are three things. Number one, agency theory concept. Number two, conflicts. Number three, resolutions. That's what we are going to begin today. We'll be looking at the agency theory concept, conflicts, and resolutions. So what is what do you mean by agency or agency theory? An agency relationship arises where one or more parties called the principal contracts or hires another called an agent to perform on his behalf some services and then delegates decision-making authority to the hired party who is known as the agent, who is known as the agent. So in an agency relationship, there are two parties. The first one is the principal the principal and the other party is the agent. So the principal delegates um, his authority to the agent who performs duties or functions on the behalf of the principal. So it is a relationship where one or more parties called the principal contracts or hires another called an agent to perform on his behalf some services and then delegates decision-making authority to the hired party. So that is agency relationship. Agency relationship and a common example is that one of a landlord and an agent. So the landlord would enter into a contract with an agent so that this agent performs certain tasks on behalf of the landlord. So it is a contract between two or more parties where one party known as the principal hires or contracts the agent to perform certain tasks on his or her behalf. So I've given a common example. But in finance, in finance, in finance, uh, shareholders are the owners of the farm. However, they cannot manage the farm because number one, they may be too many to run a single farm. Number two, they may not have technical skills and expertise to run the farm. Number three, they are geographically dispersed and may not have time and may not have time. So in the field of finance, in the field of finance, shareholders are the shareholders will be the principal. And in finance, in finance, we've said that shareholders are the principal and they may not have time to manage the organization. The owners of the company may not have time to manage the organization. Uh, that is the element of time. They may not have the time. Number two, they may be too many. They may be numerous. They may be too many to run the organization. 
you may think of a company that has say a thousand shareholders they may also not have the technical expertise technical expertise to manage the company so because of these reasons and many more other reasons these shareholders will hire or will um, seek the services of an agent to run the company on their behalf so shareholders employ managers who will act on their behalf the managers are therefore agents while shareholders are the principal the shareholders contribute capital which is given to directors which they utilize and at the end of each accounting year render an explanation at the annual general meeting of how the financial resources were utilized and this is known as uh, stewardship accounting stewardship accounting stewardship steward ship accounting so the shareholders are the owners why are they owners they are the ones who have injected capital into the business then they entrust this capital with the managers or directors so at the end of every accounting period these stewards these managers these directors are expected to give a report because they are only agents they are supposed to provide a report to render a report at the annual general meeting at the annual general meeting so uh, the shareholders employ managers who will act on their behalf so in the light of what we have just uh, discussed shareholders are the principal while the managers are the agents the managers are the agents so agency problem arises due to the divergence or divorce of interest between the directors and the shareholders between the principal and the agent so there may arise a problem and this problem may be due to divergence remember we are talking about agency theory conflicts these conflicts are what we are calling here problems agency problems agency problems or conflicts with arise where there are divergence of interests remember we said the principal hires the agent so there will be conflict there will be conflict there will be agency problems where this agent does not operate in the best interest of the principal the managers may not act in the best interest of the shareholders and because of that there will arise conflicts or problems there will be conflicts or problems due to divergence of interests due to divergence of um, the divergence of interest or divorce of interest between the principal and the agent so the conflict of interest between management and shareholders is called agency problem in finance the conflict between the principal or the shareholders and the managers is what we call um, agency problem or agency conflict in finance but we need to also mention that other than the relationship between shareholders and managers other than the relationship between uh, the agency relationship between the shareholders and managers there are also other agency relationships in finance other than what we have mentioned and we've just said the relationship between the shareholders shareholders and managers 
other than shareholders and managers, we can also have shareholders, relationship between agency relationship between shareholders and creditors. Number three, we can talk of agency relationship between the shareholders and the government. There may also arise agency problem between shareholders or agency relationship between shareholders and auditors. Shareholders and auditors. So under this subtopic, we'll be looking at these agency relationships. We also discuss the problems or conflicts that may arise as a result of this relationship and how to resolve the problems. Resolutions, okay? Agency problems and resolutions. So that is um, what we'll be discussing in this subtopic, in this subtopic. So we'll take the first, the first agency relationship and this relationship is between shareholders and management between shareholders and management and i've just mentioned that uh, uh, we are taking the first one shareholders and management i mentioned that in the world of business or I just mentioned that companies, companies, in the management of companies, there is separation between shareholders and managers. All right? There is separation. There is divorce. So that those who manage are not the owners and the owners are not the managers. So there is... Uh, separation of ownership and management of the firm so that the owners employ professionals who are managers who have technical skills. So managers are professionals, are supposed to be professionals. They are hired by the owners. They have technical skills. So these managers might take actions which are not in the best interest of the shareholders. This is usually so when managers are not owners of the farm, when managers are not owners of the farm, they may take, make decisions which are not in the best interest of the shareholders. Right? Um, but sometimes you may find that those who are managing are the owners. There is no restriction. It's not law that shareholders, um, managers should not be shareholders. You may find a company where those who are managing the company are the shareholders. But in most cases, um, there is near separation between management and ownership. Management and ownership. So managers might take actions which are not in the best interest of shareholders. This is usually so when managers are not owners of the firm. That is, they don't have any shareholding the actions of the managers will be in conflict with the interests of the owners and the actions of the managers are not are in conflict with the interests of shareholders will be caused by the following. So the actions of the managers will be in conflict with the interest of the owners. So we are going to look at some actions which will bring conflict conflicts so we want to discuss the actions some of the actions which will conflict with the interests some of the actions of managers which will conflict with the interests of the shareholders the causes of conflicts that's what we want to discuss we need to discuss what are some of the ways some of the reasons or some of the conflicts that will cause conflicts number one is the incentive problem incentive problem Managers may have fixed salary and they may have no incentive to work hard 
and maximize shareholders' wealth. This is because irrespective of the profit they make, their reward is fixed. They will therefore maximize leisure and work less, which is against the interest of the shareholders, which is against the interest of the shareholders. So the first problem is the incentive problem. Incentive problem. Thank <music> you.